Today on Alcara Ham Radio, we're going to be wrapping up the GMRS repeater build and going over the cost structure and comparing that to buying a brand new repeater off the shelf. That's what's coming up next on Alcara Ham Radio. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and today we're going to be wrapping up the GMRS repeater build. We wanted to go over all the major components that were used as part of this build, and also give folks a, a little bit of an idea of the kind of money that it would take to, uh, to do this kind of a project versus buying a commercial repeater off the shelf, which you can certainly do and which our club has done, and that we enjoy those repeaters very much. But we wanted to, uh, to do this as a project, to enjoy it, and to share it with folks, and, uh, and then see what kind of a, a cost differential we actually ended up with. So we hope you've enjoyed this series. We're going to be, again, going over the components uh, for the build, and, uh, and you'll get an idea whether you might want to attempt a project like this. It does require some fairly advanced skill sets and knowledge. We've tried to capture as much of it as we can to help share that with other people. Uh, and so let's go ahead and talk about uh, each of the major components and approximately what they would cost uh, if you bought them used. So the first major component that you would use for a build like this is going to have to be some kind of radios for this and, and something that uh, a lot of folks, a lot of clubs and people have used really for many years are some older ICOM radios, the uh, F221S and the F121S radios. VHF and, and UHF, and these have been used for a lot of years to do this very type of thing, to not only use these for their originally intended purpose as nice mobile radios, but to build a repeater. So these tend to run, it can vary, but about $85 a piece, uh, and so you can still pick these up. Uh, as always, uh, watch uh, use listings very carefully. Alright, so here we see the dual radio faceplate uh, that we purchased for this. We didn't have to go this route. It certainly makes it nice and neat and pretty to look at. Uh, there's definitely other things you could do. You could just mount these on a, um, a, a shelf for uh, whatever kind of mounting you're going to do. Uh, but this dual faceplate is about $80. Now, for the power supply for this unit, uh, we went with something that our club has used many times for many projects. And these are power supplies by a company called IOTA, I-O-T-A. This is their DLS 15 amp model, 15 model, 15 amps. And these work great, and you can do all kinds of battery projects for these, and they also have battery uh, tenders and things. So speaking of battery and power, we use some 100 amp hour uh, deep cycle, deep cycle batteries. Those run about 145 if you... Uh, 35 to 45 if you don't have a core charge. The power panel we put together, uh, about 40 bucks for that. And then also, of course, we uh, decided to use a little uh, uh, Anderson Power Pole Distribution Block. Uh, this is one that AC4DM designed and built, uh, but you can find very similar types of units with more or, or probably even fewer uh, positions. These tend to run about $50 for this size. The cabinet we used, this is a Motorola cabinet, it's an old telco uh, type cabinet, telephone uh, type stuff. Uh, you can usually still find these ever so often at ham fest and things once they are picking up again this year. Um, if you can find one of these, it's a 19 inch, you have to watch the depth, uh, but these run around 50 bucks, you know, it can depend. Now for the breakout cabinet for the terminating panel here. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do here. If, if you buy a pre-built panel meant for 19-inch racks, you're always going to pay a premium. Uh, these are very simple little aluminum cabinets. You could form your own, but to buy one of these, about $125, but it makes it nice and neat. Now, also, the, um, the MCC controller, microcontroller here, for, for doing this, for working with these two radios, because you, you need more than just the two radios. Uh, this is one of the more expensive items in the build. This, these run about $200. Uh, and you can, I think you can still find these uh, maybe used or new old stock, but uh, not, not real cheap. Also, you're going to need a, um, a duplexer. Uh, if you buy a, a, a commercial, uh, you know, repeater, you can get the duplexer, uh, you know, built in. Um, you know, and, and you'll have to tune it for whatever you're going to use it for, VHF, UHF, or GMRS in our case. 
um, you know, these tend to run about $400. Again, they're not inexpensive. Um, and, it, you know, maybe you can find one that's used and still in good shape. Uh, you also need some special cables. Now, for these ICOM F221S model radios, you need these OPC 617 cables, and you need two of them. Uh, and these, again, are not cheap for, you know, a little, what, 8-inch long cable or whatever. They're about uh, 60 bucks a piece, so it's going to cost you about $120 for a pair of those. And then we had, you know, any number and amount of odds and ends, hardware, screws and nuts and, and cables and made a few little custom cables and things. So all of that kind of stuff, we figured we probably used up maybe $30 worth of materials there. I mean, it's going to vary. It's going to vary on what you've got. Uh, whether you've got some things laying around from previous projects and purchases or whether you have to to run out to a hardware store on, on a lot of these things. But we figured for us it, it, it was somewhere on, on the order of, of $30. And so those were pretty much the main components for this build. Now let's uh, take a quick look at what would be at least one option if I wanted to buy a VHF, UHF, or GMRS repeater. Well, uh, Bridgecom sells one, and uh, we have a couple of their units, in fact. Uh, I think a GMRS, and we have a 2-meter, I believe, from them. And um, so if you're going to buy one and you're going to get the duplexer built in and pre-tuned for you, which is nice, uh, as you can see here, you're looking at about $1,600. Uh, of course, they've put all the time and labor and effort. Now, when you look at this, there's no cabinet, there's no power supply, no batteries. So a finished repeater, if you will, is probably pushing closer to two thousand dollars, you know, a good nineteen two thousand twenty one hundred dollars. But you get a brand new unit uh, with new radios, you know, with some warranty and tech support and things. It's not a bad way to go. Not a bad way to go at all. Now let's take a look at what kind of money we're talking about, uh, at least approximately, if you were going to build one of these. Well, you can see the numbers for yourself, folks. We broke it down as far as at least all the major components that we could really think about. And um, again, you can see there, we came up with around $1,545. So it's not that it's a whole lot less expensive than buying one off the shelf. It is a little bit because, as I say, the, the almost $1,600 for a brand new one, but that doesn't include any kind of a power supply, batteries, and a few things. So you're probably looking closer to $2,000 for a, an off-the-shelf one somewhere in there. And with this, you're talking $1,500, $1,600. Again, the, the prices for all these things can vary quite a bit. It just depends on what you can find and where, and, and sometimes you get extra good deals and things. So the other thing to keep in mind with this is, although it was a great project and we had a lot of fun doing it and sharing it with everybody, uh, it is fairly advanced, and it's not going to be for everybody. Uh, you know, we try to capture as much of this as we can and, and so that, uh, you know, in the future, people could maybe refer back to a video like this and say, hey, you know, maybe we can still do this. But it's not so much about major cost savings. There probably would be some in there, but you're having to volunteer <laughs> your time and effort for free. Uh, as long as you're willing to do that, yeah, there might be a little bit of cost savings. It's probably not going to be anything all that dramatic. So, again, we just wanted to capture that and, and share this with everybody and, uh, and just kind of wrap up this project. And it was a lot of fun capturing some of those knowledge and skills for ourselves and also getting it on video so we can share it uh, for our club members and, and anyone else out there. So that's pretty much it, folks. That's the end of the GMRS repeater build. We're probably going to do a 2 meter and a 70 centimeter just as backups for our commercial repeaters. Uh, but it would be the very same processes and, and more of the same components. So that's it for this one. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Link Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Thanks for watching the series, everybody. Look for more videos to come. 73.